Brighton County, Utah. A bunch of kids are setting up a spook alley at the... What's... what's that? What's a spook alley? Yeah, I didn't know either. Apparently, a spook alley is something like an authoritarian's idea of trick-or-treating. It's usually held in schools and neighborhoods in Utah on or around Halloween. You know what else is in Utah? That's right, abandoned mills. And you know what's inside of those mills? Mormons. Well, I mean... Yeah, most likely. You know what's inside this particular bill, though? Killer aliens! Not even one of those will stop these kids, however, as they go upon their mission to set up shop and show that jerk, Tony the Teenager, how a spook alley is really done. Live, in a gorilla suit, on top of an especially extra extraterrestrial's drug lab. It's 1978's The Varro Mission, also known as Teen Alien in places with police that check for out-of-state warrants. The VHS cover of The Varro Mission asks, quote, did it really happen? End quote. Did what really happen? Did this movie tell us an alien has spent a century ripping the heads off wolves while making face-melting space meth in the basement of a mill? Did this movie poke considerable amounts of fun at the idea of kids making a silly haunted house attraction, complete with inept monster masks and gorillas, just to itself end up being a movie about a monster that is a guy in a mask wearing a t-shirt and pants? Did Utah Cinematic Scooby-Doo really show a group of teens spending at least 80 unsupervised minutes in the 1970s without smoking even one jazz cigarette? Come on. Did this kid really think this hat made him look tough? Shockingly, yes, it, this, that, all those things, and probably more, all really happened somehow, somewhere, here, behind you, in your face, on VHS. The creators of Teen Alien were aiming for the stars of wonder with their tales of alien alcohol zappers. Tales that missed space and instead crashed violently in the rotten, tomatoey depths of the Z-grade. Luckily, the movie's budget didn't exist, so they lost practically nothing, and you have only to gain by watching the crackle and pop of the flaming wreckage here. The most obvious piece of debris here before us is the acting. Well, they're sure to win. Tony Anderson. Yeah, it's me. Who are you? What do you want? I'm new school. I'm not from this area. I overheard you talk about the old mill. Acting like this can only be achieved with innovative auditioning techniques, Techniques like, and I'm not kidding here, walking into a high school and picking students to be in a movie. That's a true fact I gained by interviewing the guy who made the mask for the movie's alien, Navarro. This casting method, unsurprisingly, led to the movie being populated by people whose only acting qualification is that they were in a high school at the time someone would ask, is anyone here an actor? Or they at least had friends who were in high school and heard about that acting role and then showed up to be in the movie. Okay, so maybe they don't have friends. Maybe they were just trying to buy drugs next to the high school and they heard about the kooky movie being filmed at the old mill. Okay, okay, so what's what's wrong with that? They live in Utah, man. They gotta get their kicks somehow, quit hating. Well, assuming these actors or, or whatever they are, whoever showed up to be in the movie and they can at least read, what is teen aliens writing like? What were they reading? When the dialogue isn't dubbed people just repeating names in the dark, it's the sort of movie where the villain has to tell you why they're doing what they do, as they do it, in great detail, sometimes while wearing pants, sometimes not. As thankfully featureless as E.T. Here's Groin is in this very strange children's movie, the alien does have a striking face. It's one so iconic, it survived the movie's rebranding as Teen Alien in the 80s. And here it is exploding out of the memorable VHS cover that's probably the only reason anyone knows this movie today. But if you think that's lame, okay, we'll just wait till you see the police in this film. Yeah. Or this guy who looks like Santa and spins when he enters a car. Come on, it's fun. Alongside the alien Varro's design, the movie is brilliantly lit. Practically coming for your pupils with bleeding comic book colors that presaged Creepshow. Throw in a funky Moog soundtrack, an incredibly endearing and inspired red and green and even blue button Star Trek setup in this alien lab, 
and you won't even need the drugs that this alien is trying to push on you to have a really, truly gnarly audiovisual experience. Teen Alien might be a movie without actors, a horror movie without horror, a science fiction movie without science, and barely any fiction. But it has the right things going for it. A quiet charm, a real authentic 1970s Halloween feel and experience, and a powerful, powerful Mormon message. If you try to indulge in alcohol, drugs, or Halloween, you are going to be attacked by aliens. Praise Mormo. I give Teen Alien four 100-year-old alien teens out of five. The Vero Mission, Varo Mission, Teen Alien, the Ric Flair story, whatever they want us to call this movie, I call it the most fun you can have with a flashlight this side of breaking into a porn store during a blackout. What's that? You want to see Teen Alien, a.k.a. the Varo Mission? Oh, no, no, I get it. I know what you're really after. You want some of that space myth. Well, buddy, stop asking. I smoked all of it. But there might be a link in the description to a restored version of the Varo Mission, combining multiple VHS versions of the movie, something some madman put together for you in the basement of a local mill. 